The story starts with a building on fire, but unaware of that, our protagonist Luana is busy cooking a noodle soup for herself. As she starts eating, a group of soldiers rush to the kitchen, led by their captain, who does not believe that the carefree and shabby girl in front of him is the sixth princess of the kingdom. But he has orders and tells his knights to arrest her, and the only thing she cares about is her soup, which she cannot eat now. At another place, the royal family is on their knees in front of a conqueror, and Luana just walks right in and sits next to her eldest sister, Ingrid, in this chaos. Ingrid tells her to go sit somewhere else, as she will die if she sits with the royal family. And even though she says that she is a part of the family too, her other sister mocks her as the daughter of a maid. The crowd murmurs about her too, but she doesn't care because she thinks that all of them are going to die here anyway. There is a reason Luana knows this. She was once a normal girl in Korea who read a romance fantasy novel just before she died and she knew about the story. The beautiful and kind Ingrid was the female lead, and the crazy emperor fell in love and asked her to come to his side. She refused, so he ordered his duke to take over her kingdom. And then the duke fell in love with her too, and that was the main conflict of the story. Our protagonist got reincarnated as the Princess Luana, who had no place in the story and was not even recognized as a princess by anyone. But since she was here, she decided to eat to her heart's content before she died, and it seems that the day of her death is here. The Duke Legion has conquered her kingdom, and as he approaches the royal family, everyone except Ingrid and Luana is terrified, and the latter can only think that the chocolate uniform of the Duke looks tasty. The terrified king says that he will give everything in exchange for his life, and Luana chuckles, thinking that he has nothing to give. This attracts the duke's attention, and Ingrid comes out to defend her sister, and Luana remembers that this was the beginning of the heartbreaking romance of the second lead. She is excited that it was according to the plot and gives it a thumbs up, not realizing that she was doing it with her body too. The duke asks her what she was doing, and she is embarrassed as she tells him that she meant that he was the best but he notices something about her hands and asks her to show them to him. She makes excuses, so the duke orders his knights to search her, and she feels ticklish, just as they hold her. They find a meat jerky strip and demand that she tell them if it was a weapon or poison, but as she fears that they might not like her answer, she does not say anything. But then Legion places his sword at his neck, telling her that she might get a painless death if she tells the truth. Luana realizes there is no point in hiding the truth and shouts that it was cheese jerky so loudly that everyone there is stunned. Using that chance, she hides behind Ingrid, and the Duke asks her to repeat herself. But then she walks up to him and offers him the jerky, thinking that if he likes the taste, he may spare her life. The Duke eats it despite his soldier's protest, and that results in Luana being thrown into jail. She is still worried about her food and asks the knight putting her in prison about the cheese jerky, and he says that the duke ordered it to be disposed of. And now Luana is even more terrified, as she thinks that her jerky must taste horrible and the duke will surely punish her for it. She starts crying, afraid that he might keep her locked in here for the rest of her life, when the duke comes there and calls her a witch. Luana is confused and Legion asks her not to pretend because he could actually feel the taste of the food she cooked. She is confused because she does not know that the Duke had lost his sense of taste because of a witch's curse, and now he prepares to torture Luana for some answers, and he is furious because he is certain that she is a witch. Luana suddenly remembers that she read about the curse in the book, and realizes that the Duke hates witches very much. She screams that she is not a witch, but the duke plans to torture her until she changes her statement. She is terrified, as her back is against the prison cell, and the only way she can think of saving her life is to admit that she is a witch. She bows before him, saying that she was just a witch's apprentice and could not cast or lift curses, and even shows a burn mark she got during cooking to the duke, saying that it was proof that she was a witch. She says that she used magic to make the beef jerky but did not need to do it. And as she explains the recipe, Luana refuses and begs him to spare her life. The Duke has second thought since the food she cooked was delicious, and he decides to cancel the torture. Instead, he takes the girl to the palace and tasks her with cooking food for him. And if that can please him, he will spare her life. Luana has the finest ingredients before her, and she thinks that she will make the best dish she can out of this, 
and she will not regret it even if it is the last thing she cooks. She begins cooking, and the Duke's deputy, Lugard, thinks that she uses weird ingredients. The dish is ready, and he leads Luana to the Duke's room, and she is upset that she cannot eat the delicious food right in front of her. As she enters the Duke's room, she finds that he was waiting eagerly for the food, and she is confident that her dish will save her life. But when she removes the cloche, the Duke asks her what this dish is that he has never seen before. Luana cannot say that it was one of her favorites in her past life, so she decides to claim that it was something she invented. Legion asks her to try it first to check for poison, and she feels lucky to get the first bite and is blown away by its taste. He says that it might be slow-acting poison and decides to wait longer. But she scolds him, saying that the food will not taste good if it gets cold, and he feels strangely compelled by her words. So he takes a bite, and Luana waits for his reaction. He is blown away by the amazing taste, and as Luana gets up to tell him about how adding noodles makes the dish even better, he gets up. He says that the emperor promised him he could take one thing he wanted after he destroyed the kingdom. And though Legion did not want to take anything initially, now he wants to take her with him. Luana is shocked, but she asks him what will happen if he takes her, and he says that till the administrative work is complete, she will stay locked up and cook food for him. She is overwhelmed and suggests to him that there are two beautiful princesses in the country, and he should rather take them, and Legion gets furious as he asks her if she is opposing his decision. But then her stomach growls, and he tells Lugard to take her away and lock her after feeding her. Luana decides to make egg-fried rice balls for herself, and as she murmurs for them to be delicious, Lugard asks if this was a witch's ritual. She thinks he is rather naive, and when she offers him some of it, he copies her, and she barely controls her laughter. But they finish making the rice balls, and after eating them, Lugard's opinion of her changes. Then he takes her to her room, and she learns that she was being kept with the royal family and not the servants, and she feels that this was not going to be good for her. But anyway, she has decided to brave everything that comes her way to survive. After Lugard drops her at the palace and witnesses the royal family jump like hungry dogs at the rice balls, he returns and on the way meets another knight called Henry, who is quite hungry. So he offers him a rice ball that Luana had given him earlier, and just then, Legion comes to him and he is fuming with rage. Inside the palace, where the royal family is fighting for rice balls, Ingrid is the only one who shows Luana some kindness, and as she takes out the last rice ball she had hidden to eat later, the first princess begins to crave it. Yet she does not ask Luana to give it to her, and she feels that she was so kind because she was the female lead. She gives the rice ball to her, and Ingrid splits it in half and thanks her for sharing it with her. As Luana thinks that her sister is so kind and beautiful, she does not notice that an angry legion is entering the room. He comes to her, stares at her and the leftover rice ball for a while, and then orders her to come with him. Luana follows him without complaining, but Ingrid stands up for her again and says that she will not let him do whatever he wants with her little sister anymore. Legion is furious and tells his soldiers to take her away, and they first catch Luana before the Duke tells them that he meant the other princess. They take Ingrid away, and the Duke says that now no one will come in their way and asks Luana to lead the way to the kitchen. He wants her to make rice balls for him and she realizes that he was angry enough to send Ingrid to the dungeons because of jealousy over food. She is furious and wants to curse him, but she cannot say anything because she is too afraid. Then Legion tells her to cook only for him from now on, and not for anyone else because he does not like sharing what is his. He pins her against the counter, but as Luana tells him that the vegetables are about to burn, he leaves her to her task again. Her heart is pounding loudly, and it is not because of any romantic feelings. She is just afraid that the Duke always comes so close to her to talk to her. She finishes cooking, and he eats six servings before saying that he was a little full, and they should go back now. Luana is glad that she can finally go to her room, but he says that she is coming straight to his room, and she is terrified. He says that he wants to keep an eye on her, and she hopes that since he is the Duke, his bedroom will have adjoining rooms for personal attendance but she is proved wrong as he uses a single-room bedroom and even starts changing right in front of her. She screams as she sees him taking off his shirt and thinks that she would rather be with her arrogant sisters that see this. 
But even though she says that she will look to the other side, she cannot help but look at him and finds that he is rather skinny. She wonders if he did not eat well because he really could not taste anything but her food. And then he asks her what she was thinking. She is startled, but then sees him sleeping in an uncomfortable position while hugging his sword because he cannot even sleep much because of the curse. She asks him more about the curse, saying that it is not her area of expertise as a witch. He says that whatever he chews feels like sand and soup tastes like sewer water, but he can perfectly taste what she cooks. But then he draws his sword, asking if she planned to curse him while he slept. But she is just flustered and goes to sleep on the couch. She cannot sleep because she is busy thinking about how her fate changed because of her silly actions and the Duke's unpredictable reactions, and she wonders if Ingrid and her nanny are fine right now. She falls asleep and has a dream where she hugs her nanny as she complains to her about the evil Duke asking her to cook for her, and then she wonders why her nanny is feeling so firm. She opens her eyes and finds that she was touching the Duke's chest and sleeping in his bed as he asks her if she was awake. She was already horrified, but then he told her how she crawled into his bed and pinned him down, and she explodes from embarrassment. He says that he hopes she is prepared for the punishment of doing something so reckless, and he picks up his sword. She is afraid and apologizes, asking what she should do to correct her mistake. He says that he is hungry right now, and she leaps out of bed to cook something for him. She is mortified as she tries to cook, still thinking about her horrible sleeping habits and blaming the Duke for half of this incident. But then she decides to focus on the food, as that is the only thing that could save her. She cooks a baked pork dish and potato salad, but before she can finish it off with onion soup, Lugard comes to tell her that the Duke has started to sharpen his sword, and she rushes off with what she has prepared. He is waiting even more eagerly this time, and she nervously presents the eggplant and potato salad to him. But before eating, Legion asks him to set up one more plate and sit down to eat with him. She is nervous and confused but follows his orders, and as she takes the first bite of the dish, she feels its wonderful taste and texture, which is perfect according to her. But then she wonders if the Duke is eating well and finds that he had finished five servings by the time she ate half. He says that it was worth eating and decides not to punish her for last night because then she would not be able to cook like this. Luana thanks him, but then he says that there is one more matter to be sorted out. Legion looks at her with scornful eyes and then orders his maids to take her away as she asks him to stop. But it turns out that he had asked them to bathe and dress her, and the maids have a misunderstanding that the Duke had spent the night with the girl, so she was special to him. After being cleaned and dressed, Luana can tell the difference in her looks, and even Legion says that she is looking more pleasant now. She is furious as he mocks her previous look, but thanks to him, she got to wear the prettiest outfit she ever wore because she always had to dress like a maid. She wants to thank him but gets flustered as he approaches her and takes out a leaf from the rose in her hair, and then guards inform him that Princess Ingrid wants to see him. Legion takes Luana with her to see her in the prison, where Ingrid lashes out at him, but he just ignores her and walks away. She is still worried about Luana, but before she can say anything to her, the Duke calls her, and she has to leave her sister after just telling her to hang in there. Legion scolds her, saying that she is not free to move of her own will, but as she is going out, she is only worried about her sister and asks him if the royal family is being fed. Legion tells her that it was pointless to be worried about them, as they were going to be executed anyway. And to save her sister's life, Luana pulls up her ace card and asks the duke if he was hungry. She told him that if her food was delicious, he would have to feed the royal family and the maids well, and then she worried if she was being too rude. Legion stays silent for a while before asking her the reason behind the offer. He says that most of the royal family members will be executed either by beheading or starvation, and he has heard that they have neglected Luana for all her life. Luana sincerely tells him that she does not care about what they have done to her, but she feels bad for anyone who is starving. The duke is moved, and he takes her offer and tells Luana that he would feed her family only if the word delicious came out of his mouth. So as she wonders what to cook, the princess is on the edge. But then she finds something that will make the duke say that her food was delicious. She was going to make fried chicken for him. On the other hand, 
Legion is wondering why he agreed to such a bold request, because he would not have accepted it for anyone else. But then Luana comes to his office, presents him with the famous combo of fried chicken and beer, and eagerly explains that he will like it. As he silently tastes the chicken and the beer, Luana is nervous because he is not saying anything, but the Duke is so overwhelmed that he finds himself in another world because of the dish, and this is the first time he actually asks Luana's name because he was used to calling her the witch before. He accepts her request, and though it is pathetic, the royal family gets to eat food for the first time in a while. The king is shocked at the sudden mercy, but the queen has heard about the rumors going on that the duke was interested in the abandoned princess, and she plans to use her. Luana was overjoyed to hear this at the dinner where the duke was eating the fried chicken he had ordered her to make again, and she says that there was something even better than this, and it was spicy seasoned chicken. She speaks about the various sauces that could make it better, and Legion gets furious that she served him the most basic version of the dish. She tells him not to be angry as she cannot make the remaining sauces right now due to the lack of ingredients, and he says that he will immediately order what she needs. But Luana says that she will have to make the seasonings and sauces herself, but she will need some time and budget for it. Legion immediately gives her a lot of money and tells her that if she spends it anywhere except the ingredients, he will be furious. She leaves happily with the money and thanks the Duke for calling him by name, and he as well as the knight standing next to him are stunned. Luana frolics, thinking about the seasoning outside, but she collides into someone, and the red-haired woman is excited to see her. The woman introduces herself as Layla, the lady waiting for the queen, and she calls Luana the youngest princess of the kingdom and has something to deliver to her from the queen. The next day, Luana serves the duke ham cheese toast and soft-boiled eggs for breakfast, along with tomato cheese salad and yogurt. She is acting weird, but as she excitedly gives him the second serving, he asks her since when did he permit her to use his name. Luana had not noticed it before, and she is mortified and tries to make excuses, but seeing her trembling as she holds the food plate, he says that he does not care what she calls him as long as she gives him good food. She cannot believe that the authoritative duke could forgive her so easily, and only thinks about it as she takes the empty dishes back to the kitchen. She thinks that it was because of her cooking that Legion was changing, but then she runs into Layla again, and she asks her if she used the thing she gave her in the food. But then a knight comes to her, and the maid disappears as soon as Luana turns to see him. As soon as Luana goes inside the kitchen, she takes out the bottle and a note that mentions mixing it in his food, and she is sure that it was poison. She is horrified that while the king and queen never thought of her as a daughter, she suddenly became their youngest princess when they needed her to do dirty work. On top of that, adding poison to delicious food was blasphemy to her, and she decided to throw it away when she got the chance. But she does not get the chance during the day, as Lugard was watching her in the kitchen and the maids surrounded her outside. And now she is in the duke's bedroom, trying to keep the poison secure so she can throw it away tomorrow. But Legion has seen her flinching and fidgeting all day, and he tells her that he is going to take her to the imperial capital as a prisoner and even present her before the emperor because she is a witch, so he wants her to stop behaving like he is going to eat her. She wonders what he wants, but he comes near her because she does not reply, and by the time she says anything he is already pulling her blanket. Luana turns and accidentally falls on top of the duke, and she is embarrassed for a moment before they notice the vial of poison rolling on the floor. She rushes to catch it, but he reaches it first and confronts her about what she was doing with poison. She says she didn't know it was poison, and he mocks her, saying that while he was being so kind to her, she still dared to use poison against him. Smiling cruelly at her, he gulps down the poison, and Luana is shocked. She runs to him and snatches the empty bottle from his hand, asking him what he had done, and he replies that he was immune to most poisons. She grabs him by the collar and yells at him that he shouldn't have drunk it, even if he was immune to all poisons. Legion is stunned as she again shouts at him that he was so careless about his body, and then a knight comes running because of all the noise, and he thinks that it was a romantic scene, and he runs back immediately. She realizes what just happened and apologizes as she gets away, and Legion is panting heavily as he says that it was not poison and tells her to go outside the room so that they can talk about it later. 
She goes outside, where Lugard gives her a separate room on the Duke's orders, and she still has no clue what is happening. The potion was an aphrodisiac, and he is sure that Luana was not the one who made it, and someone took rumors about them being close in a different way. He summons an assassin, gives him the empty vial, and asks him to find out who was behind the drug because he is not going to forgive them. The next morning, as Luana is preparing breakfast for the Duke, Henry tells her that the king and queen were executed before dawn, and he asks her if she knows anything. She can only think about the drug vial, but then Henry says that she must be too tense to see the Duke after so much drama last night, and he offers to take the breakfast to him in exchange for some food. But while Luana does not feel anything about the king and queen's execution, she is worried about Ingrid, who is crying in prison upon hearing the news of her parents' deaths. She just sent one polite letter to refuse the emperor's courtship, and he took everything away from her, and she decides to never forgive him. Meanwhile, Legion is not pleased that Luana sent the food through Henry, but he still wants to eat what she cooked, and finds that it was a light, yet delicious and refreshing stew. He wonders if she did not come to see him because of last night, or because she was upset about her parents being executed, but he has appointed someone to inform him of her every moment. In the Imperial Palace, the Emperor gets the news that Legion executed the King and the Queen, and he thinks that it meant he was going to return soon, so he decides to give him a grand welcome. In the kitchen, Luana is preparing to ferment the beans when Legion walks to her, and she is startled enough to splash water on him. She asks him if he did not like the food, but he says that the food was fine and he did not like the one who came to deliver it. With that, he tells her to pack her stuff because they are going to the Empire right away. And the only thing Luana wants to pack is food items. But as soon as she sees Ingrid coming to the Empire with them, she is very happy, but she cannot get close to her because of the security. Luana then gives the food she prepared for the Duke to eat while traveling, and it is quite simple, but he says that this was much better than anything else. Then he tells her that the first thing they have to do when they reach the Empire is go to the Emperor and show him the prisoners, and Legion tells her not to fall in love with the Emperor. Luana is confident that it will not happen, and he replies that if she does not fall for the Emperor, he will give her something nice. Legion gets a great welcome from the people and the Emperor Raytheon, but as he welcomes Ingrid, she is furious and lashes out at him. He menacingly replies that no one would have died if she had accepted his proposal, and Luana thinks that he is completely deranged. But then Raytheon turns his attention to her and asks the Duke who she was, and he replies that she was the one thing the Emperor promised him upon returning victorious. He is curious now, and asks her what made the Duke attracted to her, and soon after hearing her answer, he immediately sends her to the Imperial kitchen, ordering everyone to stop working while she shows her skills. Legion is nervous about what is going on, and as the Emperor expresses his curiosity and asks him why he would bring a girl whose only special talent is cooking, the Duke replies that he could taste her cooking, and the shocked Raytheon understands that she was a witch. Meanwhile, Luana is overwhelmed because she did not expect to cook in the Imperial kitchen, but luckily she has every ingredient she can need for a quick dish. She wants to make a fried dish for the Emperor since it was not common in this era, but since Legion would get bored of eating too much fried chicken, she decides to cook fried pork. She even orders a chef of the Imperial Palace around, but as the dish is completed, she thinks it was good enough and places a heapful for Legion while giving the normal amount to the Emperor. She has plated it and leaves after thanking the chef who helped her and then asking her to help her bring it to the Emperor. But the Imperial chef mixes the plates and gives the larger portion to Raytheon. Luana is horrified upon noticing that, but still calmly answers the Emperor's question as she panics inside. Legion cannot wait any longer, and he takes the first bite before the Emperor, and then covers it by saying that there was no poison in the food. Then Raytheon takes a bite of the fried pork by dipping it in the sauce, and he likes it so much that he asks Luana to keep coming to the palace frequently. But then Legion stands up and tells the Emperor that it belonged to him. He was initially shocked, but then realized that the larger plate was indeed meant for the Duke, and he laughed as they exchanged plates. But then he turns to Luana and asks her to make more of the dish for him because his plate got changed, and she immediately runs back to the kitchen. She only feels relieved when she is back in the carriage with Legion, 
and babbles about how the emperor was less scary than she thought, and he looks quite serious as he asks her if she fell in love with him. Luana is surprised, but then remembers the bet they made earlier, and she thinks that even though the emperor was handsome, Legion was much closer to her taste. She tells that to him, and he is taken aback and says that a witch always has strange tastes, and she is flustered. But Raytheon is looking at them from his room, and he thinks about how desperate the duke was to keep the witch apprentice by his side. The emperor was interested, but he said that he would not steal something from his subordinates. And despite Legion saying that there was nothing besides the food deal between them, his reactions told him otherwise, and Raytheon thinks that he will not be bored for a while. Legion drops Luana at his mansion and leaves to somewhere he thinks she does not need to know, and she is escorted into the mansion by the butler Kane. He is a kind old man, and as he shows Luana her room, he looks happily at the girl and starts praising the duke, and she realizes that he was trying to hook them up. She tells him to stop because she is tired, and she is frustrated because she does not want to get involved in a relationship with the duke and destroy the story's flow. But she jumps onto the bed and falls asleep immediately, waking up hungry in the middle of the night. She sneaks into the kitchen, but there is nothing much in there, so she makes porridge with what she has available. She is enjoying her midnight meal when someone knocks on the door, and she takes the pot with her to the garden, terrified that someone might scold her. And just as she sits on a bench, Legion approaches her and takes a seat by her side. He had just returned from the palace and had not had dinner, so Luana offered him porridge. He asks her, did she not make it for herself? And she replies that she can make more. As Legion tastes the porridge, he remembers the time when he could not eat even the best quality steak and asked Cain to bring it to him as porridge so he could gulp it down in one go. This looked the same as that, but it was indeed delicious, and he finished it quickly. Luana wonders how bad his situation must be if he chooses to starve over eating regular food, and to make him happy, she says that she is going to make a lot of delicious things and make him gain weight. She holds his hand and makes a pinky promise with him that she will make delicious food for him, and he will eat it without leaving any leftovers, and he blushes slightly as he tells her not to hold anyone's hands without permission. But then he reminds her of the bet they had made earlier and gives her the kitchen in the annex, which she can use to make breakfast for him tomorrow. Luana is pleased with the gift and thanks him, but someone is watching them silently. The next morning, Legion's chef Wade is shocked as he learns that the Duke has got someone else to make food for him and sent him a message that he will no longer require his services. Luana has finished cooking, and as Kane approaches her, she asks him to lead her to the Duke, and he is not certain about it. Meanwhile, Wade is angrily heading towards her because it was his duty as the best chef in the Empire to cook meals for the Duke. For the past five years, he could not make the Duke taste anything good, and he thinks that the new girl defeated him by the power of love, and he will not be convinced of his defeat until he sees it with his own eyes. On the other side, the butler still has no idea about Luana's food, and he is still nervous as he leads her to the Duke, saying that he does not eat breakfast. She thinks she can just ask it of him, but he was changing clothes, and she blushes and turns around as she sees him. Legion asks Kane to bring the breakfast to him and it is pancakes, sausage, and milk tea, and the butler is nervous to present it to him. But as Legion starts eating the pancake without complaint, Kane is moved because he thinks that it was the power of Luana's love that made him eat the food. When Luana returns to her kitchen, she is startled by the ferocious-seeming Wade, who introduces himself as the Duke's chef, and he just heard the Duke say that her cooking was delicious. He cannot believe it and asks her to have a cook-off with him, and she does not understand what is going on. But then Henry spots them talking, and he volunteers to be the judge and even drags Lugard with him. As everyone else is already sure about the competition, the sous chef, Garth, tells Luana that she does not have to accept it, and says that Wade was just concerned about the food that touched the Duke's heart. Garth takes him away, but Luana stops them, saying that she accepts his challenge. The cooking challenge begins and the rules are simple. Both Luana and Wade will have to make the dish they are most confident in, and apart from the two knights, Cain was called in as the third judge. While the chef is determined to prove his skill by making his signature dish, Luana has thought of something lethal, too. 
Wade presents his complex dish first, and he is shocked when, rather than being intimidated, Luana just wants to taste it. On the other hand, her dish is a strange-looking carbonara chicken, and no one has ever heard of that combo before. She gives Wade a plate, too, and just as he tastes it, he cannot believe that chicken and noodles could be cooked like that. As Henry says that they will begin the evaluation, Wade says that there is no need for that as he has already lost. He bows to her, saying that she was unique and creative and that he could never come up with a dish like that and demands punishment for needlessly disturbing her. She says that there was no need for it, but if he wants to do something for her, she would like him to teach her more about the Empire's dishes, and he gladly agrees. After a month, she has finally made soybean paste with his help, and she drools as she dreams of the dishes she can make with it. She thanks Wade, and he blushes a bit on hearing that, but Legion is watching them, and he is jealous. He thinks that the chef was young and shared a common interest with Luana, and he does not understand why he feels jealous of that. He tells Kane to ask Luana to prepare tea for him, and when he meets her, he says that he feels like rewarding her for adjusting well to this place and taking care of the chef's commotion. Luana thinks for a moment, and then asks him to let her go to the market that is organized every five days, as she is curious to see things by herself and find out more about the Empire's unique food items. Seeing him hesitant, Luana says that she does not plan to run, and if he was still worried, she could go with Wade. He is startled and then says that if she wants to go, she can come with him on his day off. But other than that, he has shocking news. From now on, he has to eat lunch and dinner at the Imperial Palace, and she can only cook breakfast for him. Luana is upset about it as she feels that Legion became docile because of eating her food, and if he does not get to eat it, she fears he will turn aggressive again. Meanwhile, Legion trains the knights at the palace, and as he goes to eat dinner, he is disgusted by the food even more after getting used to good-tasting dishes. The next day, as he is leaving for the Imperial Palace from his mansion, Luana gives him a packed lunch because she knows he cannot eat well at the palace. The amount is too much, but since she pleads with him to take it, Legion takes it all with him in a carriage, and when the Emperor learns it, he has some amusing ideas. He summons the Duke and teases him about the amount of food, saying that he should have no problem sharing some of it with him. But seeing the uneasiness on his face, Raytheon realizes that Luana was taming the Duke well, and although he thinks it was good for now, it would be troublesome if he got too involved with her. On the other hand, Luana is lost in thought about the lunchbox and if Legion liked it, and she has been fumbling and making mistakes all day. But then Kane tells her that the Duke has arrived, and she runs to him and excitedly asks him how the lunchbox was. He says that it was delicious and even the Emperor liked it, but she does not have to prepare it tomorrow, because she is coming to the Imperial Palace with him. In the palace, Ingrid has been refusing to eat anything for many days, and she is so starved that she sees illusions of her dead mother in the moving curtains. She is crying, thinking about all that when Luana enters her room, and she is worried to see her sister like that. Ingrid wonders if she was an illusion too, but as she calls her, Luana cheerfully runs to her and holds her hand. Ingrid was determined not to let the cruel emperor have herself after what he did to her parents and her kingdom. But as Luana saw her starving, she was worried and made her porridge, which she could easily digest, yet the princess did not eat it. Even then, Ingrid was more worried about her, asking her if she was okay after they lost everything. Luana replies that she lost different things from her, and they were all bad things. Ingrid apologizes for not realizing that, and she replies that she still understands her pain because she also felt that she lost everything just a little while ago, but then she focused on what was left and things got better. Hearing her words, Ingrid suddenly sees a ray of hope and starts eating the porridge with tears in her eyes, and Luana comforts her. She falls asleep immediately after eating, and then Raytheon and Legion come in, and the former goes to touch Ingrid, but Luana stands in front of him, telling him that he should not disturb his sister's rest. The Emperor is furious, but Legion steps up for Luana and apologizes on her behalf since she is his one of his own now. She is stunned, but after the Emperor dismisses them, he wonders whether he should get rid of the girl who dares to stand in front of him and makes his loyal subordinate act unnaturally. 
Outside, the Duke is lecturing Luana about how she could have lost her life since the Emperor was not a kind person, and she says that she knows it. But then she suddenly asks Legion if she is his person now, and he is lost for words. He replies that she was a prisoner under his command, and he had to be responsible for her. But she is somehow dejected by this while the Duke is blushing a little. Soon it is the day when Luana and the Duke go out to the market for the first time, and she is amazed that it was so big. She is excited to explore it and almost falls because of it. But then Legion pulls her closer to himself, asking her not to get separated from him. She is flustered but obeys and keeps holding on to his shirt, while he does not understand why she does not even think of escaping in the crowd. Luana suddenly spots cocoa fruits and rushes towards them, and Legion has never seen them before. As he asks her why she wants them, she replies that she can make an incredible dessert using them. He is a bit annoyed at her careless nature, but as she shops around for other ingredients, he goes missing. And as she looks around for him, people bump into her and she almost falls again until a hooded man with silver hair holds her. She is amazed by his purple eyes when he calls her name. And as she gets back on her feet, she asks him how he knew her. The man says that she is Alanya's daughter, and hence the daughter of everyone too. And before he can say anything else, Legion comes behind him and places his sword around his neck. He asks her if she knows him. And when she refuses, he tells the hooded man to be very careful while answering his questions if he does not want to die. Luana asks him to stop as the man was just talking to her, but he says that it was not the best time to tell her anything, and vanishes in a puff of smoke. After they return from the market, the Duke locks Luana up in her room for days, and even as she bangs the door for the maids to send her message to him, they do not open it out of fear. She wonders if it was because of the white-haired man, but she does not know him. On top of that, he knew her mother, Alanya, who was just a maid favored by the king. But she died giving birth to Luana. And then the king abandoned the newborn girl, and soon all the maids ran away because of the horrible working conditions, until only the nanny remained by her side. Legion was investigating Luana's past, and he asked the nanny about her too and learned about her harsh childhood, which was a thing common among all witches. But the thing that bothers him the most is the hooded man who vanished into smoke, and he thinks that he is getting complacent around the girl. Now he is certain that Luana is a witch, like the one who cursed her ancestors to live a life of starvation, and he feels she will also show her true colors someday. As Luana eats dinner, she is worried that the Duke might not have eaten anything too. But then she remembers that she is angry with him and continues eating, yet her real feelings come out soon. She is sad that he does not believe her, and she starts cursing him when Cain knocks on the door and tells her that she was being shifted to a new room, which was in the basement. He apologizes, and her heart sinks as she realizes she is being imprisoned again. She is trembling with fear as she thinks Legion will not hear what she has to say now and thinks of running away. But she decides to abandon that thought because it will only confirm the Duke's doubts, and she hopes that she can clear up the misunderstanding with him by talking. As she comes out in front of him, he grabs her hand and tells her that he will give her a chance to explain herself and tell him about the other witches. He looks menacing, and Luana has never seen him so scary before, but she cannot let him get to her like that. She holds his hand and pleads with him to listen to her first, but he slaps her hands away even as she asks him why he looks so skinny again. Legion had determined to torture her regardless of anything, because if witches really cared a lot about their kind, she would be the perfect bait. But seeing her like this, his heart aches even as he thinks that she was acting. The girl behind him is ready to start the torture, but Legion tells her to just lock Luana up and wait for his orders. He then walks away while telling Kane to call the doctors because he was flushing red and his heart was beating loudly, and he thinks that there is something wrong with his body. Meanwhile, the white-haired man has heard the rumors about the Duke keeping a young witch in dungeons and torturing her, and he furiously leaves to save Luana. In her prison, she is thinking about the confused look on Legion's face, still not able to understand what he feels about her, and then the lights suddenly go out. She is trembling with fear and freaks out as someone places his hand on her shoulder, but then he tells her not to worry as she is safe now. The man lights up a match, and Luana finds that it was Cain who came to her with food made by Wade because they were worried about her. She is moved and finishes it quickly, 
and then Kane asks her why she did not run away when he came to get her, as she already guessed something was wrong. She replies that if she had run away, she would only have confirmed Legion's suspicions, and she wanted to clear up the misunderstanding about what happened in the market, and she starts explaining it all to the butler. Meanwhile, Legion's doctor tells him that he cannot be cursed twice at the same time, and he adds that his pounding heart is not a disease, but something that is very common in young people. He talks in puzzles, not mentioning that it was love, and the Duke does not understand. But the doctor says that he wants to meet the witch in person, and Legion was actually planning to do it. The doctor leaves, and then Kane comes and informs him of what he learned from Luana. She stopped the Duke in the market because she thought their day will be ruined if something bad happens, but instead of being calmed down, he got even more upset and locked her up in her room. Legion feels awkward, but then he blushes as he asks his butler if Luana needs anything other than more food, and Kane is stunned. And soon, her prison room is fully furnished with a hearty meal in front of her. A maid asks her if she can get her anything else, but Luana already has everything she needs. The maid says that she does not know why Luana was being treated so nicely, but it was just what the Duke commanded. She is confused but decides to focus on the food first, and when she finishes it, she is suddenly terrified, thinking that it could have been her last meal. She is depressed and begins sobbing, and as her last wish, she wants to see her sauce pots again, which she planned to use to make Korean cuisine for the Duke. She thinks that if she is going to die, she can write a will and leave the pots to Wade. But even after being weak, she is being well-fed and cared for, and that is the only instruction the maid has ever received, and now Luana does not understand what Legion could be thinking. He is getting himself checked up by the doctor, who says that he is fine and leaves, and Legion immediately starts thinking about how witches took everything from him, and he hates them for that but he cannot think of a single thing Luana took from him. Instead, she has only given him the gift of taste. As he wonders if she really is a witch, the doctor comes to his room, and as Legion asks him if he forgot anything, he replies that he just reached here. He denies treating the Duke over the last week as he was away on a family vacation, and Legion realizes what was going on. Meanwhile, the fake doctor has reached Luana's prison cell, and she asks him who he is. The man is initially confused by the well-furnished prison cell, but then he uses magic to tell her who he really is, and she is shocked to see the silver-haired man from before, who says that he came here to rescue her. Legion runs to the dungeons and finds Luana with the hooded man, and he looks hurt as he tells her that he will forgive her since she is still here, and will even reward her for luring another witch here. Before he can say anything else, the witch throws a bottle at him, and as the duke cuts it, a purple haze is released from it. Legion says that poison does not work on him, but as he collapses, the silver-haired man says that it was not poison, but magic. He wants to take Luana away, but she is worried about the Duke, who countered the effect of the sleeping magic by biting his finger. Luana is confused as she decides if she can trust the man who was offering to rescue her, or if she should run away alone. But more than that, she wants to stay because she knows Legion will suffer without her. Then she realizes that if she follows the man, she can learn more about witches and the Duke's curse and can even help him. So she tells him that she will surely be back and asks him not to be too upset, but then he falls asleep. The witch wants to kill him, but Luana stops him as she says that they need to hurry up. The soldiers also come, so he decides to spare the Duke and teleports them away. They come into a forest area, and the man introduces himself as Gerard, the Witch of Potions, and he says that the magic dust he used on the Duke was of high quality, and he would probably wake up more refreshed than ever. Luana is amazed to learn that he truly is a witch, and Gerard explains that every witch is given a title based on their specialty. Then he takes her to a house that is much bigger and beautiful on the inside, and he explains to the bewildered Luana that the Witch of Space lent him a hand. Gerard asks her if she is curious about what kind of witch her mother was, and she is more interested in learning about the witch who cursed Legion. He asks her why she was so caring for the Duke, and she says that she feels bad for him since he cannot eat anything delicious, and it was not even his fault that he got cursed. Gerard has only one answer and he gives Luana her mother's diary, 
and tells her that she was the one who cursed the Duke's ancestors. Luana is shocked and says that her mother must not have even been born when the curse was cast generations ago, and Gerard replies that witches live much longer than normal people and also age slowly. Now she is horrified that Legion was not totally wrong about capturing and torturing her, and she asks Gerard if he knows how to break that curse. He shamelessly smiles as he says that only the one who casts the curse can remove it, and Luana is shocked beyond measure as she wonders what she will tell Legion when she goes back to him. Gerard tells her that she may find some clues if she reads the diary, and he could not read it because Alanya's magic prevented anyone but her descendants from doing so. Luana finishes the diary overnight and lashes out at Gerard in the morning, saying that he tricked her because there were only things about food in it. He laughs, saying that she must have enjoyed it then, and remarks that her mother was the same as her. He then adds that Alanya was the witch of gastronomy as he gives Luana the second diary. The second diary has a story about how Elanya traveled to the north to experiment with recipes when she met a boy who had baked barely edible bread. He told her about a new lord who was going to come to the city soon, and his parents were worried that he would raise the taxes again. To ease their burden, the boy wanted to cook something delicious to give to the lord, but he failed, and yet he wanted to do everything he can to help his parents. She was moved by his sincerity and decided to help him make the best potato bread ever. The boy followed Alanya's recipe with the same ingredients he used, and the result was once again as horrible as before. She comforted him as he began to cry, and told him that he had all the time to perfect his cooking until the new lord arrived. Elanya trained the boy, and he finally made the perfect bread right before the new lord arrived. As he thanked her, she said that the most important part of cooking is caring about others, and since he thought about that while cooking, he was bound to make something excellent. As the arrogant lord came through the town, the boy approached him and gave him the bread, but he threw it to the ground, asking him if he really thought a noble like him would eat something like that. He insulted the boy and his bread, and as the boy's parents asked him to apologize, Alanya came forward and told the noble that if he could tell that the bread was horrible even without tasting it, he did not need the sense of taste. She cursed him and his family to never be able to get pleasure from their food again, and that was how it started. Luana is depressed on learning that her mother really cursed the Duke's ancestors, but Gerard tells her that the most important thing right now was the Night of the Witches, which was going to take place in three days, and he asks her if she wants to take part in it or not. And back at Legion's residence, he has finally woken up, and he does not look refreshed like Gerard promised Luana. He just had a dream about Luana where he relived some of their memories, and she turned out to be a witch and betrayed him in the dream. She told him about how his mother was forced to marry his father and thus stole every last ounce of wealth after his death and ran away. Then the emperor comes to his nightmare and says that he should have handed the witch over to him long ago so he could torture and kill her. That was what destroyed his sleep and peace, but then Cain came to him with the final version of Luana's wanted posters. Legion ordered him to put the maximum bounty on her head, and the butler tells it to Wade, who is still caring for the fermentation jars she left behind. He is worried about the Duke's health, which has been worsening ever since Luana left, and he plans to do something about it. On the other hand, Gerard explains that the Night of Witches is a coming-of-age ceremony where young witches are granted their powers and a title, and he thinks that Luana can inherit Elania's title and then use all her recipes. But it was only three days away, and the next one would be five years later, and Luana panics thinking that she does not have much time to make up her mind. She cannot decide on anything in three days, and she wonders if she can cook more delicious food after becoming a witch and how the Duke would react to it. She wants to go back to his mansion, where she has friends and people who care about her, and she wants to feed them delicious food. And she worries if Legion will even accept her if she becomes a real witch. In the city, the Duke has posted wanted posters for Luana in the city square, and people wonder what the girl could do to have such a huge reward on her head, and on top of that, she had to be captured only alive. But then Cain comes there and silently places another notice next to it, with the logo of the Duke's family on the bottom. In Gerard's home, he made becoming a witch sound like a very big deal, and Luana is even more stressed because of it. She will have to lose many things because of living too long and gaining magic, 
and the thing she fears most is that she might end up hating Legion. Then Gerard calls her down because they must leave now if they want to attend the ceremony, and she decides to ask him why he is so insistent on her being a witch. He replies that he was the only male witch in the world because sons of witches often don't have enough magic to even survive, much less to be a wizard. And that is why he was far inferior to the regular female witches, and that created a distance he could never overcome. But while everyone maintained that distance, Elanya was awed by his skill with herbs and approached him first, becoming his friend. And the gift that she gave him at their first meeting was a cup of hot chocolate. Now Gerard says that Elanya was born to normal parents, but had a witch somewhere up the family tree, and she was happy to become a witch since she could experiment with food through magic. Now he wants the daughter of his only friend to be a witch and find her happiness too. Luana realizes that his intentions were pure, and she tells him what she wants to do. Back in the city, Kane had put up a notice about a cooking competition to be organized in the Duke's mansion, and only physically and mentally healthy women were allowed to take part. The rumors spread that the Duke was looking for a bride using this competition, and many women filled the form even though they did not know cooking. The news reaches even the Emperor, and he decides to pay the Duke a visit along with Ingrid, who somehow has fallen in love with him and cannot bear to stay separated from him. Wade is the one who dislikes the idea the most, as he thinks that the Duke did not act differently with Luana because he was in love, but because she had a unique method of cooking. But then he notices someone snooping around her fermentation pots, but there is no one there on closer inspection. Legion was also angry at Kane for starting something like this without his permission, but he had gotten his signature and stamp while he was still recovering from a hangover, and the butler says that it only proved his point that the Duke needed to find a replacement for Luana. Legion gives up and decides to try out the three dishes his butler brings from the competition, saying that he will face punishment if all of them are worthless. The first and second dishes are as horrible as anything, and Kane wonders if it was impossible to break the curse in the first place. But as Legion tastes the third soup while thinking of his butler's punishment, he is shocked that he can actually taste it. He goes with Cain to the kitchen where meat dishes were lying, and the butler shows him the unique meat dish created by the same chef. As Legion takes a bite, he realizes that the last time was not a coincidence, and he can actually taste it. So he asks Cain to bring that chef to him, and he replies that she had made it to the finals, and he could meet her there. The final round starts and Garth acts as the host while Cain, Wade, Legion, and Raytheon are the judges. The Emperor teases Legion that he heard the competition was a means to select his future bride, and then they start watching the two finalists cook something unique. The chef Rio has prepared a lobster dish, and she presents it to the judges, all of whom give her excellent remarks. But Legion cannot taste it. Then it is the turn of the second chef, Miria, who has prepared a fried chicken dish with a sauce, and everyone is overjoyed at eating it. But as they ask Legion for his opinions, he just walks towards the girl and pins her against the table. Everyone is shocked. But then he says that from this day onwards, she will be his chef. And as the crowd is still in disbelief, Raytheon is the first one to congratulate him and says that he should bring his new chef to the palace sometime. Legion tells Miria to come with him to sign the contract, and there he confronts her, believing that she is Luana. Not only was the dish she cooked exactly similar to hers, but she used the spice that smelled exactly like the pots Wade had been protecting. He pins her against the wall, asking if she had come back to kill him, and says that her new look reminds her of the witch who once disguised himself as his doctor. The girl starts crying, shoves the duke away, and then screams at him, saying that he was the one who put a price on her head in the first place. The duke is stunned, but then she says that before she left... She told him she would come back because she wanted to find out how to lift his curse. She returns to her original form and becomes Luana again. She says that to lift his curse, she decided to become a witch herself, and she even ran away from Gerard since he didn't like Legion. She starts crying, saying that when she returned she was a wanted person, and the Duke was looking for a new chef, and she joined the competition only to get close enough to talk to him but Legion is still stuck on the line that she ran away from Gerard, and as he holds her shoulders, he blushes as he asks her if she left her own kind for him. He can't believe that she did all that just to fulfill her promise, and then Luana suddenly falls silent, 
realizing that she was being too loud and angry and had ruined her plan of a joyous and easy reunion. Legion asks her what she meant by becoming an official witch, and she explains that she can use magic now. He asks her if she can break his curse, but unfortunately she cannot do that yet, and when he asks her why she returned, she thinks he did not want her back until she could find a way to undo the curse. She says that she came back because he could not eat anything unless she cooked it, and the duke blushes again, thinking that she was worried about him. But then Luana asks him to hire Rio, too, because she cannot cook for him forever, and he will need another chef after the curse is lifted. Legion seriously asks her why she cannot cook for him forever, and she cannot find an answer. But he agrees to her wish and hires Rio under one condition. Before that, he gives Luana a cover story that she got lost in an overseas expedition to hunt for more recipes and somehow returned home right in time. But then Miria had to go back to her home for some unavoidable reasons. Luana is not satisfied, but it was still better than the truth. And for the condition, Legion asks her to act like they were lovers and were dating each other. She is shocked to hear this, and he says that it would benefit both of them as it would subdue the rumors about him seeking a wife and protect her from dangers as she ran away from her own kind. The next day, Luana is well-dressed, and as Legion gently takes her with him in his carriage, the maids are shocked that they seem more close than usual. But inside the carriage, Luana is uncomfortable and asks him if this was not too much. The Duke is blushing, asking her to call him just by his name, and she gets embarrassed because of his weird actions. No matter what Luana says about how her background is not suitable for someone like him, the Duke does not listen to her and says that it was just a temporary arrangement, but she must act like his lover. He asks her sternly if she loves someone else, and she is startled as she tells him that there is nothing like that. But then he takes her to a luxury fashion store and says that even though her background does not matter to him, he does not like others looking down on her, and he asks her to pick anything she likes from the store. Luana is shocked, and she thinks that this is too much, but then Legion whispers in her ear that, like this, people will think that he cares about her, and gossip will travel fast enough to do its work. She is flustered because he is too close but decides to obey him, and it turns out that she has no idea about selecting clothes as her nanny used to do it back in the abandoned palace. Legion learns about her confusion, and he calls a woman working in the store to help Luana, who makes her try on a pretty and comfortable dress, and even the Duke compliments her, and that makes the girl's heart beat frantically. Next up is eating desserts at a famous restaurant, and Luana is worried that the Duke cannot eat them, but he says that he was not here for that, and tries to feed her with his hands. She is shocked at why he is doing that, but when she sees people staring at them, she thinks this was his plan to spread gossip. Luana plays along, and as he orders something more for her, his stomach growls loudly because of hunger. It has only been two hours since they had breakfast, but she can tell that Legion was really hungry, so she asks him if they can go to an open space, and as he leads her to the nearby lake, she starts setting up a cooking station with the help of some knights. She had already thought ahead and prepared many things in advance if she needed them, and it did not take her long to prepare the spicy rice cakes with fritters and peach juice. The food looks different than usual, and Legion is hesitant, but as soon as he takes a bite he finds that it also tastes different than anything he has eaten before. He enjoys eating it, and then Luana says that he should thank Rio, because she was the one who told her all about seafood. As she talks excitedly about how more seafood can be prepared, the Duke listens to her attentively and she thinks that arranged dating was not as bad as she thought. Luana thinks that it would be nice if it lasted for some time, but as Legion smiles at her, she gets chills as she wonders if he really likes her. She thinks back at all the things that happened since she came back and thinks that Legion likes her only because he can eat the food she cooks, and she feels he will stop liking her once his curse is lifted and he can eat normally. She is a bit insecure that he might date someone else after that, but she does not realize he has been calling her name, and when she comes to her senses, he has already leaned towards her for a kiss. Even though he does not kiss her, Luana's heart is out of control, and then the Duke says that someone was following them. He tells her to act calm because he's going to take care of whoever it is, but Luana panics as he draws his sword. 
She tells Legion that it could be someone who wants to confirm if their relationship is real, and in that case, if he leaves her to take care of him, it would not be good. And then the person following them could be a witch, and his sword would be useless in that case. Legion is grumpy, but Luana suggests another idea, which is to go to the market. She says that it was the perfect place to lose the follower, and the Duke can also no longer sense them. He wants to cancel the plans and go back to the mansion. But Luana has already been attracted by some fresh ingredients to make a strawberry cake like the one she just ate for him. Legion cannot resist the charm of her smile and agrees to it, saying that he will stay by her side all the time. It starts raining by the time they get back into the carriage, and the Duke asks her if she had fun today as he wants to have more dates, even if they were under the name of the fake agreement. Luana wants to be a little honest about her feelings, but then someone disturbs them by knocking on the carriage gate. It is the leader of the royal knights, Albert, and he apologizes to Legion for being so rash, but it was an urgent matter as the emperor had commanded them to bring Luana to him at once. Legion is suspicious and says that Luana is tired from today's activities and he will bring her to the palace tomorrow, but the night captain is insistent and she is confused about everything. She steps up to go, and even as Legion stops her, she thinks that it was not smart to disobey the crazy emperor, and seeing the sad look on the duke's face, she decides to mitigate the situation with a kiss to his head. Everyone is startled, and the duke cannot believe what just happened, so he lets her go, asking her to return quickly. Inside the carriage to the palace, Luana is mortified, as she thinks she overdid it, but she tries to justify it to herself. But then someone stops the carriage and kidnaps her, and Luana realizes from the way he calls her a princess and his green eyes that he belonged to the fallen kingdom. The kidnapper knocks her out, saying that she will be a handful. Legion runs to the emperor in the rain and learns that he never sent anyone to bring Luana to him, and on top of that, even Ingrid was missing. Raytheon is furious and mad, and he commands the duke to bring back the first princess from her captors and even free Luana while he is at it. Luana wakes up in a room with Ingrid quarreling with the green-eyed knight, and as she exclaims that he was a kidnapper, he asks her to treat him with dignity. He introduces himself as Kine of House Ilong, and she remembers that it was the second most powerful family in the kingdom. But then Ingrid explains that it was all her plan to escape from the cruel emperor, and she sent the stalker after Luana to inform her of her plans. Ingrid says that now everything will be fine and they will never go back to the Empire, and she is shocked. Kine says that he knew Luana would not be pleased with this because she was playing house with a mass murderer while Ingrid was putting together a suicide squad. The princess shuns him, and as he leaves disgruntled, Luana asks her sister what he meant by a suicide squad. Ingrid explains that she called the people who were still loyal to the fallen kingdom and using their help. She wants to get back their country. A few days after that, Luana is stuck with a bunch of rebels without having any clue what to do, and she thinks that the story is going off the rails now. Earlier, it was still fine with Legion not falling in love with Ingrid and her being spared, but now she was trying to take back her kingdom, which was too big of a deviation from the plot. She thinks that the original story was too harsh and was about Ingrid's despair as she is forced to love the man who took everything from her, and she thinks that the current storyline looks much better for her. Luana wants her sister to be happy on her own rather than being with the crazy emperor. But she doesn't care about the kingdom. Also back at the empire, she has her adorable bunny legion waiting for her. But as soon as she thinks this, Luana is shocked as she wonders why she was thinking of him like that. She decides to ignore it and focus on food, but it is horrible. And that is the only thing in life she cannot tolerate. So she decides to cook for everyone herself and when Kine comes to see what is happening and his subordinates offer him a plate, he throws it on the ground, saying that she was cooking for a mass murder not long ago. He says that she might have added something to the food, but Luana shoves a spoonful into his mouth, and he is completely blown away by the taste. He gives her permission to cook under supervision, but then she wants to talk to Ingrid and makes an excuse for inviting her for a meal. Ingrid tells her to wait by the shed while she changes into some decent clothes, but in reality, she is with Gerard, and she asks him to say whatever he wants quickly. She soon goes out to meet Luana, who is amazed by the beautiful flowers in the garden she has seen somewhere before. 
and then the two sisters start eating together. Then Ingrid suddenly asks Luana if she wants to go back to the Empire, and she was not expecting that question so quickly. But her sister already knows she is not interested in the kingdom or rebellion. She brought her here because she just wants her to be safe, as her plan could put her in danger. She thinks that Kine was right when he called Legion a mass murderer, and he could harm Luana if provoked. Luana understands the worry of her sister, but she had seen there was good in the Duke, too, and she tells her that. Ingrid is shocked and asks her if she was really dating the Duke, and even though Luana refuses, her sister is hurt enough and leaves. Gerard is still in her room, and he tells her that they need to move because the Imperial forces have already tracked them down. But before that, he wants to know what she talked about with Luana. He leans towards her and menacingly tells her that if she fails to stop Luana from reuniting with the Duke, he will not help her assassinate the Emperor. Luana is thinking about her conversation with her sister about the Duke when a knight comes and tells her that they have to go right away. Legion is coming to their location with an army right now, and while everyone is making haste, Luana wants to see him. But she cannot stay back and suddenly thinks of another way to send him a message. Legion's army comes there, and they find the place without any signs of anyone living there, and he realizes that magic was used to achieve that. He heads straight to the kitchen, imagining that Luana will be waiting for him there while cooking something. But it is also empty and he gets sad as he wonders if she really was kidnapped. He wants to trust her, but the clues are not looking good. Suddenly a breeze comes in through the window, and Legion finds a silver strand of hair tied around a fork, whose length is like Luana's hair. He laughs in relief, saying what kind of clue this was. Meanwhile, the Emperor is furious about still finding no clues and thinks that he was quite lenient with Ingrid before, and this won't happen the next time he finds her. Meanwhile, Ingrid is scolding Kine for bringing flowers to her room instead of worrying about more serious things, and he looks upset about it as he wanted to make her happy. But after he leaves, Ingrid suddenly falls to the floor, and her mind is tormented by the memories of the cruel emperor. She remembers when she was having lunch with him, and though she was disgusted at seeing him, she had to act nice so that she could earn his trust and loosen his grip around her but then she noticed those white flowers and suddenly said that she was not feeling well, and he told her to get some rest. She went to her room and asked her maid to bring her a plant encyclopedia. She learned about the white flower, Ophelia, which did not grow well in the Empire's climate. The flower she often saw in her childhood symbolized freedom and a new beginning, and Ingrid started crying and smiling, thinking that not everything was lost. The maid reported it all to Raytheon, who ordered her to decorate Ingrid's room with the Ophelia flower while she slept. She could not understand it at first, but then she concluded that the Emperor wanted to mock her by showing what she had left after he took everything away from her. So the next day, when he asked if she liked her gift, she pretended to be happy while swallowing all her rage, and Raytheon was fooled by her act. When she returned from lunch, she found even more flowers in her room, and she thought that maybe he was not mocking her and was genuinely happy that she liked it. But then she banished that thought and bumped into the maid carrying a flower pot and then even cut her hand while trying to pick up the mess. As she showed her bleeding finger to the maid, the poor girl panicked and began begging to ask her to forgive her. Ingrid did not know what the big deal was until she woke up the next day to find no flowers in her room and the maid had been replaced. Then Raytheon took her to show off his garden, and as she pretended to like it, she asked him about her previous maid, and he said that the incompetent girl had her hands cut before she was thrown out of the palace. Ingrid was horrified, and the emperor still talked about how merciful he was with such a mild punishment and led her to the glass house he prepared for her. She was furious at him, thinking that he was a man who did not care about anything, not even her. He just cared about his own emotions and would do horrifying things without even thinking about others. She started crying, but as Raytheon looked back at her, she decided that she would still carry on living and do something she must. So she hugged him and asked him to forgive her for doubting his love. Ingrid confessed her fake love to him, determined to become a flame that would burn down everything he owned. In the present, she calls Gerard to her aid again and asks him to prepare the magic he had offered to give her before, because now she is determined to use it despite the dangers. 
Inside the kitchen, Luana is cooking, and Kine is watching over her because he still does not trust her, and she is annoyed. She tells him that it was wrong for him to judge her when he does not even know her, and he tells her that they faced a lot of difficulties and sacrificed a lot to put up the suicide squad. But Ingrid kept on pushing them forward because she wanted to meet her sister again because she gave her hope. As he is thinking about Ingrid, she summons him through a night, and as he leaves, Luana realizes that she just gave her hope because she was sorry for her and not to fall back against the crazy emperor. But then she realizes that the story was deforming because of her, and she feels like she should talk with her sister once more. And in thinking that, she burns the pancake she was making. On the other hand, Legion was wondering what he should report to the emperor when he came to the site himself to express his disappointment with the duke and decided to take the investigation under his command. Raytheon orders him to kill everyone in the rebel group once they find them except for Ingrid, and seeing him so nervous, he asks him if he was worried about his filthy princess. Before Legion can give an answer, he hears a commotion outside and goes out to find a knight of the scout team attacking other soldiers over personal grievances. The assistant says that everyone who returned after scouting the forest to the east showed similar symptoms, but then he notices a purple fog coming towards their camp. Meanwhile, Luana was out looking for some ingredients in the forest, and after losing her way, she got caught up in the fog, too. But then she hears someone talking, and as she goes to see what was happening, she finds Gerard talking with Ingrid about the magic he just cast. It would strip away the rational thinking of anyone who inhales it, and they would act only on desire and kill each other. Luana is shocked to see her sister with the witch, and as she stumbles over a stone, they notice her. She starts running in the direction of the Empire's camp, and Ingrid chases her. Gerard thought that this was going too fast, but he thinks the faster the relationship between the two sisters breaks, the better it will be. Meanwhile, the fog has begun to show its effect, and the Emperor thinks that it meant Ingrid was here so he sets out to find her. But Legion says that he will join him because all that matters to him is the Empire and the Emperor's command. And Raytheon snickers, saying that he likes that answer. On the other hand, Luana does not understand why she was running and why she feels betrayed by Ingrid, even though she is not even her real sister, but just a character in a novel. And she cries as she wonders if Legion felt like this when she left him too. She can only think about him as she runs, but then she stumbles and falls to the ground as she sees someone approaching her. Ingrid is also looking for her, but since she can't find her, she decides to regroup with Gerard when someone suddenly grabs her hand. In the other location, the man approaching Luana turns out to be kind, and he scolds her for being in such a dangerous place. But as soon as he hears that Ingrid is here, he is shocked and grabs her shoulder, demanding that she tell him where she is. He is frantic and does not even notice that he was hurting Luana until she reminds him, and then he says that Ingrid disappeared after telling everyone not to follow her. But when he sent some people because he was worried about her, only one of them returned with heavy injuries and said that Legion was in the fog, and right now, he has found Ingrid, and she is afraid that she ran into him of all people, and he furiously asks her why she was calling Luana's name earlier. She thinks that even if he was in his right state of mind, the Duke was a mass murderer, and if Luana comes near him, he might kill her too. So she decides to stall him and says that she will not tell him about her sister. He had captured her, which was his mission, and now he should leave her sister alone. She says that Luana has lived in captivity her entire life and asks him to let her go this time. But Legion releases Ingrid's arm, telling her that he was not doing this for her, but because it was safer for Luana to be with her than with him or the Emperor. Ingrid is shocked, and before she can ask anything, Legion pushes her and tells her to go and keep her sister safe. On the other hand, Luana tells Kine about Ingrid's location, and just as he leaves, she begins wondering if Legion was around here. She thinks that her sister did not care for her, and only used her to get help from Gerard, and now she doesn't even want to think about anything anymore. Ingrid has also spotted Gerard in a nearby tree, and she asks him why he lied to her. She asks him why he said that the Duke hated all witches, and that is why he was holding Luana captive, and he refuses to admit he was ever wrong. Now Ingrid has realized that Luana and the Duke love each other, and she has no plans on separating them after she is done with the Emperor. 
She tells Gerard that she can no longer work with him if it means sacrificing her sister. He warns her that she will not be able to defeat the Emperor without his help, but when she is insistent, he breaks the alliance, and as a parting gift, tells her that her knight has been looking for her. Then he vanishes and Ingrid runs straight in the direction he said Kine was in. She wonders how long before she reaches him and then freezes in terror as she sees the Emperor stabbing him. He looks at Ingrid and starts smiling like a maniac, not noticing how repulsed she is, and says that he will forgive her if she comes back to him. She is furious, and as he repeats his offer, saying that he was very kind, she picks up Kind's sword and asks him how dare he utter that word before her. She thrusts her sword towards Raytheon, but he asks her why she was mad. If she was sad that she lost her knight, he would give her another one if she returned with him. She screams at him, asking how much more he needed to take from her before he was satisfied, and the crazy emperor casually asks her what he had ever taken from her. She screams that he took away her parents, her kingdom, and everything she loved, and he replies that he gave her all the wealth and love in return for it. Ingrid shouts at him, saying that she never needed any of that and that it never made her happy, and Raytheon is stunned. He says that she told him she was happy at the greenhouse and even confessed her love, but Ingrid starts laughing, asking if he really believed that. He is taken aback, and she says that she could never love her enemy and her nightmare, and the world in which he lived was worse than hell for her. Raytheon walks towards her, and even as she points her sword at him, he grabs it and says that she really never liked anything he did for her. Seeing her horrified expression, Raytheon realizes that she always had that expression on her face around him, no matter what kind of sweet words she said. But he did not mind it as long as he could have her forever, and he did not care if she did not love him back. That was what he thought, and as blood splashes and the horrified Ingrid asks him why he did that, he stabs himself, saying that this was the only thing he could give her that she wanted. He falls dead, and as rain comes, the fog that made people lose their sanity and do stupid things disappears. Ingrid is sitting next to Kine's corpse, unable to think of anything, when she suddenly gets alerted about someone's presence and finds that it was Luana, who was trembling with fear. She asks if the Emperor and Kine were dead, and Ingrid affirms, saying that she killed the Emperor and the blood on her clothes was his. She acts like she wasn't bothered by it, and says that even though Kine was sacrificed, in the end, she succeeded in completing her plan. She looks serious, and as Luana asks her if this really was her plan, she affirms, saying that she wanted to kill the Emperor and rebuild her kingdom. And she took Gerard's help by using her sister since he wanted her, because she was nothing more than the abandoned princess of the abandoned palace, and Luana is heartbroken. In another part of the forest, Legion wonders if Luana and her sister escaped safely, and he thinks about the moment they were together for the last time, thinking that he should not have let her go. But as he wonders if Luana was thinking about him, he smiles, and then immediately returns to seriousness, as he knows what happens to a knight who betrays the emperor. Suddenly a knight comes running to Legion, who says that he will present the information to the emperor that he lost the enemy in the fog, and then the knight captain Albert comes ahead and informs him that the emperor was dead. He takes the duke to Raytheon's body and says that the conditions pointed to a man named Kine killing the emperor and losing his life in the process. Legion suppresses the smile coming to his face as he asks Albert about the princess, and he replies that they caught one princess after her sister used her to ally with the witches and then abandoned her. Legion rushes to the tent where she was being kept and orders his knights to leave at once. Luana is sitting there with her hands tied, and before she can even take his name, Legion hugs her, saying that he never thought he would see her again. He asks her if she was safe and why she was not with her sister, and Luana thinks about what happened. After Ingrid said all the hurtful words to her, she still could not convince her sister because of the tears in her eyes, and Luana comforted her, saying that she knew her better than herself. She asked her sister to say what was on her mind and promised that she would listen to her. Ingrid said that ever since she told her to live and look ahead, she had planned on rebuilding the kingdom and had to kill Raytheon for that. She worked with Gerard because she was afraid that the duke would harm Luana, and now that she knows it was not the truth, she wants her to go back to him. She told her to act like she was betrayed by her and then sever all ties with her, 
and she smiled as she said that she deserved to live for herself. With that, Ingrid pushed Luana, and the knights found her, and now that Legion has freed her, she lies to him, saying that the soldiers told her the truth about being betrayed by her sister. The Duke thinks that too many things about the story do not make sense, and Luana was hiding something from him. But as she says that she kept her promise and met him, he again caresses her, thinking that nothing was more important than this reunion. But as she is being taken back to the Empire, she is frowning about having to travel with Lugard and not with Legion. He sighs as he tells her that the Empire was in chaos after the all-powerful Emperor died, and the Legion will be held responsible for failing to protect him, which is why he was being watched over by the Knight Captain. Luana is horrified and tries to say that it was not the Duke's fault, but Lugard tells her that nothing is certain yet, and her and Legion's fate depends on whoever becomes the next Emperor, and she is curious about who the candidates are. On the other side, Albert has suddenly attacked Legion, and he says that he was always quite an important person as the next Emperor candidate, but despite his inheritance, he was not going to achieve much. Legion asks him what had suddenly taken over Albert, and he smiles, saying that how stupid could the Duke be to fall for the same trick twice. As Legion realizes this, the man suddenly reveals his original form using magic and shows that he is Gerard. The Duke says that Luana left his place on her own wish, and he says that this is what he had a problem with. She would always run away, so using force was not a solution, but instead of that, he could just take away her reason for returning. He uses the same sleeping magic on Legion again, and as he falls asleep, Gerard says that when he wakes up, an even more horrifying curse will be cast on him. Soon Legion is back in his castle again, and he refuses to eat the food sent by Luana and angrily orders his knights to remove everything associated with her out of his sight. Lugard cannot tell her the truth, and he says that the future emperor is too busy to eat, and she is upset about it, and thinks that he must not have eaten anything. Lugard takes her to Wade, who admits that he has been cooking for Legion but could not bring himself to tell it to her. Luana cannot understand the reason behind it, and suddenly wonders if he is ignoring her because his curse has been lifted. But Wade replies that Legion was still eating with the same disgusted expression on his face and that meant he was still suffering from the curse. The chef asks Luana if he can do anything to help her, and she thanks him but says that this can only be solved by talking with Legion. Wade tells her that there was an event she could see him at, and it was Raytheon's funeral, which she had no idea about. But she learns that Legion had already paid his respects and left, so she decides to put a flower on the former emperor's coffin, thinking that he was still the male lead of the story despite everything but there she notices an Ophelia flower, and she racks her brains after returning to her room and concludes that it must have been Ingrid's last gesture to her captor. She thinks that her sister has created a unique ending for herself and must be working hard for the path she chose even now. On the other hand, she was just complaining about her fate and decides that she will do what she has to do to bring her own special ending. She walks to the kitchen like she means business, and tells Lugard a plan that he does not agree with at all. She had offered him something she cooked, and he thinks that she was bribing him to take her to Legion, but she says that this was just a gesture of apology for all the time she troubled him before. She had tried to switch Wade's food with her own and hide and sneak into the Duke's room, but she failed every time. She has made more food for everyone she has troubled, and as Lugard trusts her and eats it, she decides to move on to the next step of her plan. Wade and Rio are helping her in the kitchen, and as Garth comes back from a holiday and asks what they were cooking for since the Duke was refusing to eat Luana's cooking, she furiously replies that it was not for Legion. Luana was cooking for everyone in the palace, including the knights and the servants who helped her, and everyone looks happy to taste it. This continues over days, and she prepared everything she used to cook for Legion. He has noticed the smell of food around the palace and asks Henry what it was about. As he pulls his hand out of the pocket, a few strips of beef jerky fall out. The knight says that Luana has been cooking for everyone in the palace and everyone has been loving it and Legion is furious. Meanwhile, Luana thinks that her plan should start to work by now. And just as she thinks that, Legion approaches her and asks her what she is up to now. Luana knows that humans are easily tempted by their senses 
and even if they are not initially interested, once they see, smell, or hear something, they cannot resist it, and this was what she was planning to use to her advantage. On top of that, she knew that Legion did not like her cooking for others, so she was sure he would come to her. She acts like she was planning nothing and says that she was just cooking for people who appreciated it. He says that she had not taken his permission, and she says that she is a person before she is his captive and will do what makes her happy. Legion is furious, and he says that he is not asking her to stop but rather ordering her to. Luana plainly refuses to obey him, saying that she does not care, even if he locks her up or executes her tomorrow. She angrily chops onions, saying that she was supposed to be executed in her kingdom, and now that she got a second chance to live, she was not going to spend it in fear while being deprived of things she likes to do. Legion scoffs, saying why would she go so far for food? Luana replies that good food makes everyone happy and she wants to bring this happiness to everyone around her. He does not want to hear her blabbering and starts dragging her away, saying that he will just disappear from her sight since they cannot agree to things. But Luana is furious now, and she lashes out at him, saying that she was going to explain some things to him before saying she loved him, but he disturbed her flow. As Legion flinches, she realizes that she ruined her plan, and after a few moments of wondering what to say, she decides to be honest. She says that she got the chance to cook for so many people, but even though they liked it, she still felt empty inside. She says that what she wanted to see was the satisfaction on Legion's face when he eats her food, and he blushes. He reaches out to her, but she hands him a plate of food, refusing to talk to him unless he finishes it first. Legion refuses, and Luana is really upset that he won't eat it even after she said all those things. She decides to leave him for good when he stops her, and says that he would love nothing more than eating her cooking. But he is afraid that it will not stop at that, and he will grow hungry for her. He pins her to the table, and Luana is shocked as she realizes that his curse has worsened. And the only one she can think of who can do this is Gerard. As the Duke asks her how she can fall in love with someone like him, he leans in toward her lips and she is afraid that he will eat her now. But he does not harm her, and instead puts his head on her shoulder, saying that he does not want to harm her after he promised to keep her safe. So he wants her to leave this place, and he will give her everything she needs to live a life of comfort. But Luana refuses to listen to him, and says that he must also know that his strange appetite is due to a curse, and she has a way to break it. She says that his ancestor was cursed because he insulted the heartful cooking of a child, and she thinks if he does something to remedy that, he can break free from it. She asks him to cook so that he can learn what it is like, and Legion seems to seriously consider it, which was not what Luana was imagining his reaction would be. He asks her how she knows about his curse so much, and she wonders if she should even tell him that the witch who cursed his ancestors was her mother. But he does not dwell on that question and says that he trusts her and will do as she says. However, he has a condition that she calls for assistance in case he loses control and attacks her, and she calls Lugard and Henry, who are shocked to see the Duke wearing an apron and cooking. Luana begins to coach him through the process, and he keeps on making rookie mistakes one after the other until, three hours later, the kitchen is a mess. He says that cooking was much harder than he imagined, and thanks her for always working after he realizes what she had to do. She is awkward initially, but then says that she likes making people happy with her cooking and also eating. Legion realizes something and thinks that he should try to think about the person he was cooking for. He tries again, thinking about Luana, properly using the knife and showing patience while on the stove, and he finally realizes that the goal of cooking was not to finish the dish, but to think of the person who would eat it. Just as Legion realizes this, he hears a voice and turns back to find a woman floating behind him in a dreamscape, asking him why it took him so long to find such a simple answer. The woman says that she is Elanya, the former witch of gastronomy who cast the curse upon his ancestors, and she had entered his consciousness for a moment to lift the curse. She fools around with Legion, and he says that she looks like Luana, and she asks him if he still does not know that the witch who cast the curse was actually Luana's mother. Legion is shocked on hearing this, but he is also relieved to learn that it was not Luana who cursed him, and Alanya smiles, 
saying that he was not as foolish as her to punish a child for their parents' mistake. Then she uses her power to lift her curse, and before she vanishes, she asks the Duke to take good care of Luana. Legion was dazed out as this was happening, and as Luana wakes him up, she asks him if he was so touched by the perfect dish he created. She compliments him, saying that not only did he make no mistakes, but the food also smells delicious, and Legion wonders if what he saw just now was a hallucination. He asks Luana to try it, and she loves it and says that she was impressed by him. He blushes as he says that this was what it felt like to cook for someone he loved. He gently caresses Luana's cheeks and asks her for a favor as both their hearts are pounding crazily. The favor is calling Gerard to dinner because Legion wanted to talk about something important with him, and Luana wrote him a letter asking for his immediate assistance to run away from the palace. The male witch is disappointed to see that he was tricked and wants to leave right away. But Legion stops him by telling him that he met Elania. Gerard hears about the curse being lifted and his meeting with Elania, and he asks them if they just called him here to mock him since he failed. But as Luana shies away, Legion says that he wanted to meet with him to seek his approval before he proposed to her. Gerard is stunned speechless, and Legion first apologizes for all the atrocities his ancestors had committed against his people. The male witch is shocked, and he still cannot believe it as Legion holds Luana's hand and says that for the sake of their love, he is willing to throw away his pride and ask for forgiveness from her family, and he kisses her hand, saying this was how deeply he was in love with her. Luana blushes, but as Gerard asks him if she really stays with the Duke, not because she is afraid of him, but because she is happy with him, she replies that she is in love with Legion too, and she is genuinely happy here every day. That is all the witch needed to hear, and he gets up, saying that this was just a truce. He has not forgiven Legion and his family, and he does not trust him yet, but he has no intention of stopping another witch from finding the happiness she chose for herself. And as he leaves, Gerard wishes Luana nothing but happiness in her future, and eventually the day comes when she has married the man she loves, and as the cake-cutting ceremony is about to begin, she notices that the topmost layer is missing. In her shock, she turns towards her newlywed husband and finds cake remains on his face. Legion says that he just wanted to taste the cake, and she holds his face and asks him if he had not had too much of it yesterday. She says that he must be sick of it now, and Legion smiles as he holds her hand and says that he will never be sick of it. She can fill his mouth with dirt, and he will gladly eat it as he can never have enough of what someone who he loves made for him with all her heart. Legion leans towards Luana, and as they kiss, they are ready to start a life full of love and taste.